Today we're going to be talking about section 4.8, which is on using the quadratic formula and the discriminant. And that's what our goal today is to solve the quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. So this is the fourth method we are going to now look at of how to solve a quadratic equation. The first time we looked, or the first method we looked at was factoring. We could solve by factoring. The second one was by taking square roots. And the third one was by completing the square. Now remember, the solutions of our quadratic equation are the x-intercepts of our graph. Now, the graph is not always going to intersect the x-axis at a real nice number, and that's where the quadratic formula comes in. So our quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is to used to find the solutions of the quadratic equation if we have it in standard form, in, in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a is not 0. So the quadratic formula will give us the solution to those quadratic equations. Now, if you're interested in watching a video of someone singing this, it's a good way to memorize it. You can go to this website, and there's all kinds of them on YouTube, but there's one. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take the quadratic formula, and we're going to find plug numbers in to find it. So the first thing we're always going to want to do is set it equal to 0. So this equation is not equal to 0, so we're going to go x squared minus 5x minus 7 equals 0. And we're going to write what a, b, and c are. And a is 1, b is negative 5, and c is negative 7. Now we're going to plug those in. So we have x equals negative b, so it's going to be plus 5, it's minus negative 5, plus or minus b squared, so we're going to have negative 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 7, all over 2 times, and a is 1. So from here, what we're going to do is now you just have to simplify it. Go and do all the math on it. So we're going to have 5 plus or minus, then we're going to have the square root of 25. Um, 4 times 1 times 7 is 28, and it's going to be a positive 28 over 2. So now we're going to have x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 53. over 2. Can we reduce that at all? Is it in simplified form? Well, we have to check. Does 53 have any factors that are perfect squares? The answer is no. Is there any radicals in the denominator? The answer is no. So here are the two solutions. 5 plus the square root of 53 over 2 and 5 minus the square root of 53 over 2. So that one has two real solutions. Let's go down to example two. Again, put it in standard form. So we're going to have 16x squared uh, minus 40x plus 25 equals 0. Again, a is 16, b is negative 40, c is 25. And we're going to write our numbers in there. x equals negative b, which is 40, plus or minus, square root of b squared, so that's going to be 40 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 16, times c, which is 25, all over 2 times 16. So we're going to simplify that. So we're going to have 40 plus or minus. 16, or the square root of 1600, 4 times 16 times 25 is also 1600, so we're going to go minus 1600, all over 2 times 16, so we're going to have 40 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 16, 
Well, the square root of 0 is 0, so it's going to be 40 plus or minus 0, which really is only one thing. So it's 40 over 16. Now we can take a 4 out of all of that. And we're going to get 10 fours. And we can take another 2 out of that. And so we will get 5 halves. So in this case, 5 halves is the only solution to that. We forgot to double this. We This should be 2 times 16, which have been 32. Resimplify this here. So this is 32. So we can take an 8 out of both of those. So we get 5 fourths. So x is going to be 5 fourths. So our x intercept in this case will only have one of them because we only we had 0 in our square root. So we'll have one solution here, and it will be 5 fourths. Example 3, same thing. It's already in standard form. So A is 1, B is negative 6, and C is 10. So we're going to go x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times A times C, which is 10 over 2 times a, which is 1. So we have 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 40 over 2. So we have 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. And then we have to check. Is that simplified? And the answer is no, because we know that 4 has a factor that's perfect square. Well, 4 is a perfect square, and we have a negative in there. So this really should be 6 plus or minus 2i over 2. And now notice we have a 2 factor of 2 here, here, and here. So when we simplify this, it's going to be 3 plus or minus i. And so that is the solution for number three. So notice, we're going to get very various numbers of solutions depending upon what this looks like. If the number inside our radical, if our radicand here, we had a positive number, so we had two solutions. Here, we had 0, so we only had one solution. And here, we had a negative number, so we had two imaginary solutions. Okay, So we're going to use that later on. So remember those things. So go ahead and try questions 1 and 3. All right, so use the quadratic formula to solve questions 1 and 3. They're the answers for questions one and question three. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the discriminant, and that's the expression b squared minus 4ac for the quadratic equation, the expression under the radical. So we're looking at this part of our quadratic equation. Now, remember, if that number, which we just talked about before, if that number is positive, we're going to have two real solutions. Okay. If that number is negative, like this one, we're going to have two imaginary solutions. And if the discriminant equals 0, then we're going to have one real solution solution. All right, because think about it this way. The graph of our quadratic equation is always a parabola. And if it has two real solutions, that means that your graph is going to cross the x-axis twice. 
So you could have something that looks like this. And your solutions would be right here. Those are the solutions. Those are your zeros. Your, when we solve the quadratic equation, that's what we're getting. Two imaginary solutions. Well, imaginary means they don't really exist. So that means it will never cross. So your graph would look something like that. And what do you think it's going to mean if it has only one solution? How can a quadratic equation or a parabola cross the graph only one time? Well, that means its vertex must be on the x-axis. So in example four, they're going to ask us to use the discriminant. Find the discriminant of the quadratic equation and give the number and type of solutions to the system. So we're going to do this again, A, B, and C. Now, if we're finding the discriminant, that is, remember, B squared minus 4AC. That's the part of the equation that we want because we want to know underneath that radical symbol, if I take the square root of a positive number, I'm going to have two real, two real answers. If I take the square root of 0, I'm going to have one real solution. And if I take the square root of a negative number, I'm going to have two imaginary solutions. So that's really what we need to do. So A here is 1, B is 10, and C is 23. So in this case, I'm going to go B squared, which is 10 squared minus 4 times A times C. 10 squared is 100. 4 times 23 is 92. 100 minus 92. And this is going to be H, which means I have two real solutions. If we do the next one, A is 1, B is 10, C is 25. So we're going to go B squared minus 4AC. We get 100 minus 4 times 1 times 25. So we get 100 minus 100, which is 0, which means one real solution. And the third one, again, A is 1, B is 10, C is 27. Again, we're going to use b squared minus 4ac, so we're going to have 100 minus 4 times 1 times 27. And so this time we have 100 minus 108, which gives us negative 8, which means I have two imaginary solutions. So go ahead and do questions four, five, and six quickly. And here are your answers for questions four, five, and six in the guided practice. Again, remember, if the discriminant is positive, you're going to have two solutions. If the discriminant is negative, you're going to have two imaginary solutions. And if the discriminant equals zero, you're going to have one real solution. So let's go down to falling objects. Here is the equation that we talked about the other day in when we talked about solving by square roots. Notice we didn't have a velocity, which is the v, because the velocity was zero. We were dropping something. Today, we're going to talk about thrown or launched objects. This equation should go on your note card. h is your final height. And t is your time, v is the velocity, your starting velocity, h naught is your starting height. So when we look at a problem like example 5, it says solve a vertical motion problem. Basketball player passes the ball to a teammate. The ball leaves the player's hands at 5 feet. So when we take the following objects formula, the starting height is 5 feet. 
Okay, so the ball leaves the player's hands five feet above the ground. It has an initial vertical velocity of 55 feet. Now, if you're throwing the object up, it's going to be positive. If you're throwing the object down, it's going to be negative because velocity is a vector. It's a speed and a direction. So up is positive, down is negative. So this one is going to be positive, throwing it 55 feet per, per second. The teammate catches the ball when it returns to a height of 5 feet. So the final height here is also 0. And so now we have this equation. We have to make sure we put it in standard form. So we are going to subtract 5 to move it over. So we're going to have 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 55t plus 0. So again, A is negative 16, B in this case is 55, and C is 0. So we're going to use the quadratic equation, plug in our numbers, and we want to know how long was the ball in the air. So x is going to be negative 55 plus or minus 55 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 0 over 2 times negative 16. So if we simplify this, we're going to get negative 55 plus or minus, and then 55 squared is 3,025 over negative 32. Because 4 times 16 times 0 is 0, so this is really going to be a plus 0 back here. So then we're going to end up with negative 55 plus or minus 55 over negative 32. So if we solve this, we're going to go negative 55 plus 55 is 0 over negative 32. And then negative 55 minus 55 is negative 110 over negative 32. Well, this one is going to be 0. And 110 divided by... 32 is going to be 3.4375, so about 3.44 seconds. So these are the x-intercepts, which means the ball is going to start at, at, time, um, at 0. This is actually time because we're solving for t. Um, time zero, and the other player will catch it at time of 3.44 approximately seconds. So the question says, how long is the ball in the air? Well, the ball is in the air for 3.44 seconds. Today, we were looking at solving using the quadratic formula. Now, the nice thing about the quadratic formula is this one will always work. If you are solving a quadratic equation, sometimes it doesn't factor. Sometimes you can't take square roots. Sometimes using completing the square is going to be a big, big mess. But the quadratic formula is one that will always, always work. So remember, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Our assignment for section 4.8 is listed below.